Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I hope everybody's having an amazing Tuesday as we're about to do what we do each and every day, looking at the markets from an educational perspective, identifying both breakouts and reversals, trying to find what is a good trade for today. And yesterday we had a conversation around the fact that there is nothing wrong with taking this week off. Matter of fact, this will be our last daily market commentary for the week um, because I'm taking the week off. I, uh, I feel like it's one of those weeks where <clears throat> there's not going to be a whole lot uh, worth trading the rest of this week. And there may be opportunities, but I don't want to force them. And yesterday was an interesting day because we saw a huge drop in the markets. But what was our mantra yesterday? Don't chase, right? We talked about the fact that we don't want to chase. And hopefully you guys listened and didn't chase because we reversed right after the DMC yesterday as it came screaming right back up. So we're going to go through that today and talk about really what's important. Real quick announcement, which I think is going to be fun. So we have an open forum session tomorrow night at the website, tradersarmy.com. <clears throat> For those of you guys that are members, come into the open forum. Um, we're going to make that a uh, kind of a uh, kind of a Christmas holiday celebration. We're going to Corey and I are going to wear our uh, Christmas gear, I guess, for what you call it. It's probably just going to be a T-shirt, but uh, pour ourselves a beverage and open it up to questions and just have conversations and uh, and and just talk about the markets in general and what's happening and really about anything you guys want. And maybe a good question would be, what's the best Christmas movie of all time? I don't know, but we're going to talk about it. So tomorrow night. 7 o'clock Central, uh, we'll, we'll broadcast it on YouTube as well. So those of you that want to join us, we would love to have you join us, be part, of the, be part of the family and the festivities and join us in it. So let's go ahead and get rolling. Let me shrink my head and we will take a look at the markets today. So um, I will say one of the things that's interesting is today uh, when I look at the ES, we are right back, yes, from where we're, we're just about back to where our drop started on Sunday. <clears throat> We, we've pretty much retraced that whole move down. Not the whole thing, but most of it. Now, we did come back into that area of supply that we had looked at yesterday and just chopped sideways in there. Did get a little move away from it, um, but we had spoken yesterday about the fact that chasing makes no sense. Bounced right off of this area here, 3 a.m., and when we looked at it yesterday, we were looking at this candlestick right here um, as, a, uh, as a potential... Uh, if we got a, a good solid gap and go, or a good solid uh, reversal candlestick pattern, uh, you know, but the very next candlestick was pretty bullish, right? And so there was no strong impetus to get in. Now, I did talk to a couple of people that said that they got in on this candlestick right here on a, on a candle to candle short and picked up a few points on it and then decided to get out when it just didn't follow through. And that's okay if you did that. Because where this candle closed down here, your stop would be right up in there. So it's a very minor loss if you did that. But from a candle to candle perspective, it didn't really give you anything. So what's the market telling you today? I want you guys to tell me, right? There's about 30 of you watching live. Um, I want you to type in the chat window. Hey, my back is feeling a bit better. Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking, Mr. Fitness Rush. I appreciate it. Um, we are, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm able to move and get back into the gym. What's the market telling us today? Is it telling us to buy, to sell, or to go to the mall and buy Christmas presents? Like, what, what is that? When you, when you just look at the four-hour chart, right, we are, we are seeing that we, have, we had a big move down yesterday and then have followed by a big move back up. When I look at this, yeah, John, it's telling me eggnog, right? It's telling me eggnog. Now, by the way, when I do eggnog, you, you've got to put, you put whiskey in your eggnog. Um, what's the question of the day what's the best whiskey to put into your eggnog leave a comment down below i'd love to hear that one best whiskey for eggnog i, I prefer to i prefer just to use good old-fashioned jack daniels in, a, in, in eggnog but just saying yeah today's not a day to, to to try to force something right and i'm and that's kind of the way i look at it i don't want to fight the market when the market's not giving me a whole lot of opportunity I, i've got some supply up above me but my four-hour trend is very sideways, right? We did come into a downtrend. We got a lower low. Um, open a Robin Hood account. That's actually good, Dennis. Liz, what are you doing on here? Although I love you, what are you doing on here? You need to be at the Gambler, like right now. 8 a.m., get to the Gambler. Um, 
And that's not a casino, for those of you that are not in the know. It's funny, by the way, Liz, the last time you, uh, you played that course, I got a text from you. Todd Davis, uh, who is a friend of mine who's also on my golf trip, he sent me a, a picture of the, of, the, uh, of the gambler because we, we were on it a couple of years prior. So, All right. Well, and Liz, that's, that's, I hate to say it, that's why I only use Jack. Um, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I don't mean that to offend the Jack lovers out there, but just good old fashioned black label Jack is good for eggnog. Um, 3678 by 3670, it'd be, would be my little rally base rally above a pivot low. That's the only level that I see in here that's worth taking. Um, if you want to give something a try, I will tell you, I'm not. Um, I, I just don't see myself finding a whole lot of things in there today. Now, what I may do today. And I'll, if, I, if I do, I want to do it after the market opens. Keep an eye on, I'll, I'm going to look to the SPX options to see if I can get a Friday expiration for an SPX option. So I might do that. I will put it in the trade feed if we do come up with something good uh, on the SPX options. Uh, looking at the NASDAQ. So when I look at the NASDAQ, similar picture. We didn't have really anything set up yesterday in the NASDAQ, um, although we did wind up retesting this little wick over wick yesterday. And got a little bounce off of it twice. Uh, and so the NASDAQ 12786, the breakout is still very much in play. If we get a pullback on a smaller time frame, you got this little level right there that might be in play. Or, yeah, 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 Thursday. Thank you, Andrew. For some reason in my brain, Christmas is Thursday and, ha and Christmas Eve is Friday. I, I don't know why. I'm, ha I'm having a hot mess uh, in my own brain. But we're looking for options expirations, right? So we'll look at the SPX and see what they give us. Uh, and then in the Russell. So the Russell we did look. So the Russell, by the way, for those of you that, that paid attention on Sunday night, we had the breakdown below this line, which actually worked out really, really well. Um, well, uh, Steve, that's a great question. We will, uh, we'll, we'll see if Dwight's going to make it. I don't know if Dwight's going to make it. Dwight, uh, Dwight has a Christmas party that he's got to go to with the president. Pre he's going, actually going with the president of the world. And so, uh, you know, he got a, he got a special invitation. Um, and so I'm not sure he's going to make it. 1956 by 1949, that would be our little wick over wick area here that's, that's comparable to the other ones. Uh, let's see. Je Dennis says 12,586. There's a 15 minute level. You talking this one down here? Uh, yes, Dennis. Absolutely. There's a 15 minute level there as well. I, I didn't really consider it much because I just didn't think we we're going to make it down to there. So I would consider that is definitely a 15 minute zone. For sure. Uh, didn't give it much consideration because I just don't see us getting there today. Um, in the Russell, once again, that same wick over wick exists here uh, on a four hour. We had a I mean, that was a really steep drop. Um, but I like this. Uh, you know, let's once again, let's just put a line at the high uh, and then the Dow, the Dow. A funny thing about the Dow is that we did come through that range that we were hanging out in and then popped right back into it. We did have a supply level lined up here in the Dow, and that one didn't work out, um, obviously, as we just popped right through there. Um, but, I mean, basically, the, the moral of the story is, is that we started the day on Sunday. Sunday night, we started here, and we are now right here. So we've basically done a whole lot of nothing, right? So not that I'm a huge fan of a whole lot of these levels today, but I'm not going to be forcing things today. Um, inside of this market condition. So let me go ahead and share this grid. All right, next, bonds and currencies. I'm sorry, energies and metals. Energies and metals. So moving over to uh, crude oil. So in crude, we are still sitting between our areas of supply as well as demand, although last night, we, we did come back up to this area of supply and then got a decent sell-off from that range. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a potential breakout line here at 48.15. That's actually a really clean breakout line because we had old support 
support, broke below it, resistance, resistance. That's the kind of thing that if we get basing in here, sets up for a really nice breakout. Other than that, I don't really love the demand levels below me. We talked about this yesterday. Do I have any super clean areas of demand that are worth leaning on? My answer to that is probably not. I probably don't have any super clean areas of demand here that I would want to lean on because, you know, as I look at my one hour chart below current price, right? This area here, retest of this area here, which is a retest of this, which is like none of these are clean areas that are giving me a strong reason to believe that, that there's going to be a bounce off of that zone. Now, this could turn into a little bit of a double bottom, and I could see price coming back up through here. I think that's actually probably the better probability, but I'm not, I'm not leaning on any of it until we get basing in front of this level. Basing in front of the level, and then, yeah, I'm all in. Gold, uh, gold yesterday, once again, we had the big move down, rallied back up, didn't have the same recovery that the equity markets did, um, still uh, still kind of headed or stayed down just a little bit. So with gold staying down here just a little bit, what it tells me is, is that I think that, you know, we, we had had on a bigger picture chart this four-hour uptrend that got started, we put in this weakness here, and I thought, okay, here comes, we're, here's, here comes our breakdown as we are going to break below. Never did. Continued our upward momentum. And so um, yesterday's move down, unable to give a true recovery there. Uh, if I look at this on a daily chart, a much bigger chart on the daily, this is a strong reversal candle. So, you know, I feel like we're kind of at an inflection point in gold where I'm not going to trade it really until we get something definitive outside of those ranges. I just don't have a strong trend direction to lean on. Yes, our uptrend is still intact, but our uptrend is showing me signs that it could be a, you know, we call it a, I call it a Benedict Arnold. It could be a trader and I'm not, and I don't want to, and I don't want to rely on that uh, in this market condition. I, I'd much rather be safe than sorry. And so, you know, could there be a, now a reason to do some spread trading on gold in an options position? Yes. But from a directional perspective, there's nothing that I love. Now, natural gas, we did get an overnight, a little breakout above our nat gas line that we talked about yesterday. If you didn't take it, but you still would like to, you may get a retest of this line. If you get a retest of this line, you get long somewhere back in here for price to move up. I think this actually has a better chance to continue to move higher. Um, and then our target for there is going to be just below this 2.87 level. Uh, Ingrid, what's up, Ingrid? Hope you're doing great. Haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, supply zone on crude, 48.37. By 48.72. So 48.37. Ingrid, that must be on a 15-minute chart. You talk in this area right here, Ingrid. Um, yeah, that, that is supply, but it's formed during a Globex session. And it's on a 15-minute chart where the breakout I'm looking at is on a one-hour chart, right? And so since that's a Globex supply formed in a 15-minute session, I think that if the impulsive move is up on the hourly chart, we should be able to break through that level. So I don't know that I'm overly worried about that level since I think that we'll be able to come through it. That's my thoughts on that area. All right, next would be uh, copper. So those of you guys that look at copper, hey, copper, see, see. Let's see if we come down below this uh, 3.503. Uh, if we get basing in front of here, I think you may get actually a decent move down. I still like this breakout up above here, but obviously that's the market's not going to cooperate with me on that one. 
Um, so let's see if you get a, a break down below this area right here. Once again, the prerequisite basing is going to be required. And I, and I don't, you know, really have anything super clean. So uh, I'm going to need basing in here to make this make sense. 3.5 is probably good whole round number support anyway. And so with that whole round number support, you're going to see hopefully some basing inside of this region. All right. So you guys starting to see what I'm seeing that 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 there's a uh, there's a pattern emerging here about our levels today. Anybody else? Anybody else see a pattern emerging that there's not a whole heck of a lot to do with them? I get people all the time. Chuck, how many of these markets do you trade a day? Now, I certainly don't trade all 20 of them. Uh, it really depends on what the market gives me. Right. My main four are the S&P, the Nasdaq, crude oil and gold. Those are my those are those are the four horsemen of the trade apocalypse, and so if I know that those are my main four and I and I keep that in mind, what it does is it keeps me from trading every single thing that's not a great setup. Right when I don't have a good trading day, I really only focus on those four: uh, commodities, soy, options are different. Uh, Completely different, John. Options are completely different. Uh, there's a hell of a lot to trade with options. And that's why I'm a firm believer that everybody needs to understand how to trade options. And if you don't, like I run into so many people that are saying, I'm not going to get into options until I master futures. And I, I just don't, that, 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 that logic doesn't compute to me because you're never going to master futures. Just when you think you've mastered futures, uh, something's going to change. Options, what they do is they give you a much, much better uh, they give you a much, much better probability in those positions because I can trade them in so many different ways. So, yeah, Corey's, got a, Corey's actually really excited about his session. He says he's got a lot of pretty good setups. So I'll, uh, I'll make sure that I, that I uh, tell him not to disappoint. Uh, on soybean, we had a little breakout level. We talked a little bit about this yesterday. I'm going to remove this one for now. Um, this one's just kind of continuing its up move, right? Our four-hour trend is still up. We actually just put in a nice, a nice little, you know, technically, I mean, that wouldn't be a tweezer bottom because it's not after a downtrend. But those two buying, those two wicks together, giving me the, you know, that strong buying signal is just another indication that price has a better chance of continuing up. So, uh, you know, we get above this resistance, price could continue to move. So, and, and, I, and that would be the level to look at. Yeah, Liz, you know, it's, it's funny is that, is that people get intimidated by options. Well, and, and part of the problem is, in, in all reality, and most of you guys that are watching this are, are, are traders of both options and futures, but a lot of people that, that, just, just, that just trade futures, they just got excited about the money of futures, right? Because that's, that's really where it starts. It's, it gives me the money. Um, it, it, gives me, it gives me, you know, there's instantane, instantaneous gratification, I think that's what people like about futures. And so um, when in reality, I, I, I like options because it allows me to play with time and allow price to melt away. Uh, as I kind of flipped through these commodities, we looked at this bean oil level yesterday, thought we might get a reversal. We didn't. Good picture of a flip level in action, though, as it became an area of demand. Um, talked about this for a potential breakout. Certainly didn't get basing in it. Still, still a breakout play if you wanted to try it. I just don't think it makes any sense today, frankly. Um, 15 minute doesn't even really give me anything super clean to lean on. Uh, you know, above this 39.95, we could still run, especially if we base for a little bit. So, Dennis, I, I don't talk much about options because I leave that to Corey. But I, I mean, you know, I, I, I could teach an entire semester if need be. I mean, and I don't, and I don't say that with, with any, with any, you know, any. Uh, I'm not being a, uh, you know, what's the word I want to use? I'm, I'm not being facetious. I, I, you know, that's, that's my asset class that I have, that I've really focused on the most is, is for most of my trading career. Even though I, you know, I, I, I talk a lot more about futures today because I leave, I leave Corey the options and. Corey's, Corey's got the option side of the business, and I've got the futures, but uh, we, uh, we let it go. All right. Next, bonds and currencies. So in our bonds and currency markets, so the ZN and the ZB. Interestingly enough, when I look at those two, 
sandbagging. <laughs> when I look at these two, the ZN and the ZB, the ZN has a breakout above here and the ZB has a breakout below here. And I, I kind of like that setup. You know, the, the, the ZN being my 10 year note, the ZB being my 30 year bond. Um, I like that setup that I've got one set up for a long and the other set up for a short. And right now I'm not doing anything because the 10 year note doesn't give me as clean of a breakdown, not even close. The 30 year doesn't give me as clean as a breakup. Okay. And so when, when, when I look at, at these two, I like it just the way it's set up where it can go one way or the other, but as long as I get base, uh, you know, as long as I can get basing, I'm in, I'm in tight. Corey's not as huge of a fan of the of the ratio back spreads. He uh, he, he Corey is. I mean, he's what, what Corey's what, what he's really good at when it comes to his options is he stays in his lane, right? And he knows that his lane, his wheelhouse, is the vertical spread. I mean, he does vertical spreads more than anybody I've ever met. I mean, but he doesn't. But he's not a one trick pony. He's not going to force them when they're not there. But man, he's got him. He's got him dialed in. So that's his that's his wheelhouse. Uh, so in the euro, we had looked at this pivot high, and we got a really nice move away from that pivot high on Sunday night. A lot of you guys were able to get that. Notice the second time we came up to that level, what did we do before entering that zone? We based in front of the level. Kiss of death. So obviously it went right through. Yeah, Corey, I mean, Corey, he, well, what, what Corey does is he does a really good job of, for those of you guys that know options, he does a really good job of, of showing what is the difference in, a, in, a, in just a long call versus a bull call spread. And why would I choose the bull call spread over a long call? And then breaks it down on a risk graph. He doesn't just, he doesn't just say, well, I only, do, I, I only do verticals. But no, actually breaks it down on a risk graph. And, and it's really more based upon how long do you plan on being in the trade. And I think that, that when you look at options in that way, that's what it's, that's what it's valuable for. So, um, so no big surprise that we came through here. I left the lines on the chart just because I, had, you know, I'd, we'd seen the move off of the Sunday night session, um, but it did give us a pretty good profit off of that zone. Um, now, when I look at this on the four hour, I've got a good breakout breakdown here. I got a breakout over here. Okay, and so I'm just not going to add anything to the list. I know shocker, right? Now we did have a couple of all of our currencies. We'd had this this little, and, and we talk about this. The fact that when you have one area that shows up at the same time of the day on multiple currencies and they get blown through, they're all going to get blown through, right? So you only trade one of those. So although we're going to look at it in the Canadian dollar and the New Zealand dollar and the Great British Pound, they all hit the same level and popped through it by just a little bit, but then kind of stalled out, right? And so since there, I, you know, looking here at the Canadian dollar, I don't really have a whole lot outside of that. Same thing when I move over to the New Zealand dollar. We had that level formed at the same time of the day. Right? Level formed at the same time of the day that we popped right through and then fell after that. And now we don't really have a whole lot going on. Now, on our four hour for the New Zealand dollar, same thing with the Canadian, I, I did put in a very clean lower swing low, lower swing high. Right? Lower swing low, lower swing high is very clean. And so I do have more permission to go short um, in the fact that we are showing some weakness. Here's a little bit of a tweezer top that's forming through here right now. So overall, I believe the better opportunity is for price to come down. So if you want to get low, get short below one of these candles lows, I think that's really your entrance. Great British pound, same thing. We'd had this level here last night and we you know, popped right through that area. Came to a gap fill trade. Now, I told you, I don't set up gap fill trades in futures unless they are contract rollovers. And so didn't take an advantage of this move. Um, this was our breakdown line. So I didn't take advantage of the retest back into this gap fill level. Some of you may have. It's not something that I've seen be very effective in futures as of late. The thing I look at when I look at this is this wick over wick right, right by this pivot low. It's far away. I don't think we're going to get there today but it's at least in play. Uh, Japanese yen. Japanese yen came into our area of demand, popped away. We left that as a confirmation if it comes back a second time. Um, and then our supply area we looked at for a confirmation popped through before getting us any sort of an entry. So now, once again, like everything else, whole lot of nothing. 
And you do have a potential above here, uh, you know, with just based on this shape here. And I'm just looking at this overall price pattern here. Looks a little bit like a like a goat's head, if, it does, if, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know. It looks like it to me. I'm like looking at pictures in clouds, though. So, uh, you know, but as I look at this, uh, you know, could we get a breakout above here? That would be the only one that's worth looking at once again. In order for that to happen, though, I would need basing with narrow range candles somewhere in this area, right? And then the Australian dollar, we looked at this for a potential flip level, and the market said flip this, and it just flipped right through, right? We went right through it. And then notice we came back into it and we bounced off of it, but it's just not, there's no follow through there, right? Nothing is, nothing is truly happening. And so that confirmation just blew through. Um, on a on a flip. And so now I, I think when I look at this on the four hour, the better chance is that price continues to come down. But I'm not sure, uh, you know, where it goes down to now. Why? Where? Why are all these currencies looking at the reversal? They're all looking at the reversals because of the dollar. Right. They're all looking at the reversals because of overall what the dollar is doing. And when I think about the dollar, the dollar has gained a little bit of strength off of, and by the way, we're bouncing off this weekly area of demand. That's really what the dollar, where the dollar is found. We talked about the dollar getting down to this level weeks ago, right? For those that are longer term traders, we, we had the belief that once we got below this line that we were going to make it all the way down to this region. And so now we're seeing the repercussions of the dollar bouncing back up. Now, from a fundamental standpoint, what could be causing it to bounce back up? Could it be that our stimulus was not as big as the market priced in, right? You think about that. The U.S. stimulus has been announced. Is it possible that the U.S. stimulus was not as big as the market had originally priced it in? And so since that stimulus was a bit smaller than anticipated, um, maybe our dollar is reacting accordingly. And I think that's what when I, when I look logically at the fundamental reason as to why we're getting a little strength in the dollar, I think that's where we're, where we're seeing that. Also, remember that our currency is compared against other currencies. So while we created a bit of a stimulus, I, I, I am not familiar, you know, and, and John, maybe you know better, or Nick, somebody in the UK, maybe you guys know better what the stimuluses look like in the UK um, you know, for each citizen versus what we're doing here in the U.S. But I don't think the stimulus was as large as what the market had priced in, right? And, and the market, by, by pricing in a much larger stimulus and then us getting a much smaller stimulus, what we've seen is the market went, oh, wait, 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 that, that thing's not as big as we thought it was. So we maybe pounded the, dow the dollar down a bit too much. Now maybe there's a little more strength in the dollar than what was priced in. So just a thought, something to consider. Yeah, and it's, it's a good point, John. Not as significant as ours uh, here in the U.S. And so when I look at the overall impact of the stimulus, I think that the dollar continued to drop on the expectations that it was going to be larger. Seeing a little rally, but that also could just be people saying, well, the dollar's cheap. I'm going to buy, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick up as much of it as I can from a foreign currency perspective. So just keep an eye on it. I, I think that, I think that, until we see a higher high on a weekly chart, the dollar is going to continue to show a, a fair bit of weakness. So, well, that's all I have for today, everybody. I hope you guys had a phenomenal, phenomenal day. Once again, if I don't talk to you, those of you that are going to make it on, um, on, when, on Wednesday evening, tomorrow night, make sure you pour yourself a, a frosty beverage. And Corey and I are going to have the cameras on. We're going to see who else wants to join us. Maybe we'll have some surprise guests that join us. Um, but I'm looking forward to having you guys join us on tomorrow night's session. If you don't make it, please don't worry about it. Be with your family, uh, your loved ones. Uh, for those of you that, uh, that, that have any questions, if you need something, we're still going to be doing, uh, we're still going to be doing uh, support and our, you know, our, our sessions. Uh, as far as if you guys need help, let us know. Chuck.Fulkerson at TradersArmy.com. But until tomorrow, buddy, hope you guys have a phenomenal day. If I don't talk to you, Merry Christmas. Much love to you. And then our next DMC won't be until next week on Monday morning. Um, that's when we'll be, we will be rolling again. Talk to you soon. See ya. Oh, uh, Ness, it'll be at uh, 7 p.m. For, uh, for the thing tomorrow night. 7 p.m. So, you, Nick, you, Nick you, and, uh, you and John will be in bed, that's for sure.
See y'all soon.